Hello and welcome to day 30 of the N8 N series. So far in this week, we have seen a few internal options available within N8 N, including compression, decompression, some uh, format changing, and uh, sentiment analysis. And we also saw a lot of image editing options. Now, let's see how do we build chat with PDF functionality using N8 N and Pinecon. First off, Pinecon is a tool that helps us to store and search data in a very smart way. Instead of searching through text the old fashioned way, Pinecon converts every single data into numbers, storing the meaning of the data. Something like fingerprints for each information that it stores. Now a vector database is a special kind of database that stores these fingerprints. These list of numbers, we call it as vectors, and this help us to find information which are similar to each other really quick. So when we upload the PDF and want to chat with it, this PDF is converted into vectors. Pinecone then helps us find the right information from this PDF whenever we ask questions. In other words, it's like having a super smart librarian who could instantly flip through the works and get us exactly what we are asking based on what we ask. Now, without having to understand all of this, let's quickly understand how the system works and how do we build automation where we can upload PDF and we could chat through those PDFs. So let's get started. Now, I've already created this on form submission to upload the file. You could upload the file from anywhere. We just need the data in the binary format so that we can upload it to Pinecon. So what we have to do is search for Pinecon and we have Pinecon vector store and add documents to vector store is what we are looking for. Now I've already created the account, but if you want to create new one, you could just go to pinecon.io and create a new account. It asks you for a few questions. Just answer those questions. And as soon as you are registered on the portal, this particular pop-up opens up where you can just copy your uh, API key. Come back to any time. Click on create new credential and add it over here. I just mentioned this as thousand days video. Click on save. You can see connection tested successfully. Once that is done, uh, operation mode is insert documents and uh, we have to create an index. Now let's go back here, close this and we can create an index from here. Now I'm going to name this as thousand days. You can give any name to it and you have a configuration over here and we are going to use uh, OpenAI. I'm going to use text embedding three large, which has a larger dimension. Okay. So I'm going to choose this as 3072. Okay. And scroll down and just keep everything else as is and uh, deletion protection just enable this so what this does is when enabled prevents any user from accidentally deleting this index termination protection might must be disabled before deletion okay um in this case as this is just a sample i'm just uh, going to disable this i'll click on create index okay it takes about a few seconds and this is all ready now let's go back and I am going to use this thousand days. Okay, and embed, embedding batch size, we'll leave it to default, 200. Go back and uh, we have embeddings and document. So embedding, we are going to use um, embeddings from OpenAI and we will use the same account. Model, uh, we have to use large because that's what we have chosen here. This has to match, right? The dimension over here, uh, needs to match with whatever we are selecting here. Um, so each of this has its own uh, dimensions, which uh, each of this has its own dimensions. Large is the one which uh, can take up to 3072 dimensions. Um, small one has somewhere around 1080 or so. Let's go with large and 
I'll move this here and then we need the document. Okay, default data loader is what we are going to use. And JSON load all input data will be as is. Uh, text splitting, we are going to make it as custom, right? And, uh, and we'll select the recursive character text splitting, right? And uh, chunk size will be 1000. And chunk overlap would be 200. Now, we don't have to understand what this does, right? So let's leave it as is, click on save and just tidy up. Now, once this is done, let's click on execute workflow, which opens the form where we have to upload the file. So I'm going to upload my first file. I'll show you what this file has. So while it is getting uploaded onto Pinecon, so this is uploaded already. If you go to Pinecon, we can see all of those being shown here, right? So we have uh, around six hits here. Let's go back and build our chat functionality where we can chat with this particular PDF. And for that, I'm going to search for chat, chat trigger. We have this over here. And because we know that we have to respond back, I'm going to already make this change here. Let's click on test. We have got this one. Now the note that we are going to use is called question and answer chain. And uh, connected chat trigger node is what we are going to use. JSON.chat input is perfect. Next up, we have to use some model and We'll go with OpenAI chat model, account three as always. And this one, we can make it as uh, GBT4 maybe, right? Now, uh, retriever, we'll use uh, vector store retrieval and uh, limit is four. Let's leave it as is. And vector store, what we need is a pinecon vector store because that's what we use. And this is gonna be thousand days video. Right, use the same one basically. And then operation mode is uh, retrieve documents as vector store for chain tool. Uh, we'll leave it as is. From list, we have to use the same one that we used uh, before, which is thousand days, right? And once this is done, embedding is going to be uh, the embeddings open AI. And uh, we'll use the same account. Very important thing is the model. Okay, so if you have used large before, we'll have to use the large one here as well, right? Let me click on um, tidy up and let's click on save. And I'm going to ask question related to this particular PDF. Now, let me firstly show you what is the PDF all about. So this has uh, details about vector database management system. Okay, which is basically telling what is uh, a vector database management system and all other details. Now let's quickly ask some question from this particular file. So I previously had chatted something. So let me just refresh. So let me ask the question. Give one real world use case of vector databases. And so we get the response back. I'm going to connect this one now. And let's just enable this. Click on save. Let's ask the same question to see if you're getting that as the response. It's having problem. Let's ask this again. Nope, something wrong here. Oh, I've not connected this. Now let's ask this question. Give one real world use case of vector databases. And we get the response here. One real world use case of vector database is in a uh, geospatical application, two dimensional points such as location of the end user and points of interaction can be represented as vectors and so on and so forth. So let me just uh, connect this, enable this, go here, put this as response and wait for user reply should be disabled. Click on save and we are all sent. Now let me just refresh and I'll ask the same question again. Let's see if we get that as the response. Okay, so you can see here, 
Uh, one real world use case of vector databases is in similarity search of images and videos. This process typically includes image normalization in terms of size and pixel values and feature extraction prior to vectorization. Now let's go to the book and see if uh, these things are available. I think it's somewhere over here. Yeah, so you can see here, uh, similarity search in general and then image and video similarity search. So this is uh, one of the uh, use case. Let's see if it gives us like uh, voice recognition or chatbot and long term memory uh, kind of things. So let me ask it. Any other use cases? So let's quickly check. Yes, besides the business use case mentioned, there are several other use cases described. For instance, Vector Data has various usage scenarios. All data objects that are vectorized in a meaningful way may be used in approximate similarity search, which forms the basis for virtually all retrieval operations in a vector database. Example of such use cases include storing and comparing modular structures, comparing uh, rentable apartments, and so on and so forth. Right now, why did I upload the data from the form? The reason being we can automate this entire process, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload the second file and let's ask the question basis the second file. So I'm going to execute this. We'll choose a file and I'm going to upload this file. Of course, these files are not related to us. We got this from Google and we are using it only for the purpose of understanding how this chatbot works. Right, so I uploaded second file and let's quickly check what is the second file all about. This is the no code playbook. Let me just refresh this. And uh, so thanks to the author of both the books uh, who has written these wonderful books. And I'm going to ask one question from this particular book. And that's going to be. Now, I've not changed any other thing and just uploaded the file dynamically and the chatbot will start responding basis the second book as well. So one of the key challenges in scaling no code adoption is the gap between supply and demand of software developers. As the overall developer population is not limited, this results in a growing challenge to meet the demand for new digital solutions. Now, let's quickly go to the book and find where is this coming from. Now I'm going to search for challenge. Oh yeah, it's over here. So the gap between supply and demand of software developers is increasing. According to analyst firm IDC, the overall developer population uh, was 26.2 million in 2020, roughly half of whom were full-time developers and so on and so forth. So you can see that the detail is coming from this particular section. So that's how you build a chatbot that can respond basis the PDF that you upload. Now, there was no technical knowledge needed at all. All you had to do is create an account on Pinecode, get the API from there, connect it on NA10, and you are all set. It took us less than 10 to 15 minutes, I believe. So, if you have PDFs that you want to keep chatting with, build this chatbot yourself. If you find this helpful, please share it with as many people as possible because we are making tech accessible to a lot of people. We want all your support to ensure this knowledge reaches wide audience. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.